all right so with this background uh, you know let's basically uh, take some examples So let us take a second order system. Remember the uncompensated system in a second order case was had some you know a naught square f by 1 plus s by omega naught the whole square and what was the closed loop uh, quality factor in that case a naught root f by 2 which was too high anyway correct. So, I mean uh, if a dominant pole compensation helps a third order system it must also help a second order system and another you know practical matter is that uh, you know I remember as the uh, we were talking I mean as we were uh, discussing the other day see it is always very easy to slow a system down right. So, rather than add a, a new pole which is much lower than these two existing poles one might as well take that one of those poles and make it deliberately lower right. I mean in, uh, in circuits that is very easy because all poles are consequences of capacitance at a node right and uh, you know where this capacitance where this pole is coming from which node this pole is coming from. So, if you want to make one of those poles uh, you know lower in frequency you identify a node take a big fat capacitor and put it on that node and that uh, the you know the uh, so in other words rather than add a new pole and make the system a third order one uh, you can make uh, uh, you know one of the poles dominant with respect to the other. So, in other words the uh, uh, dominant pole compensated system is uh, One plus s by omega d by one plus s over omega naught. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, let's do uh, first of all. Uh, 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 what comment can we make? I mean, how uh, low should we choose omega d? Or oh, so let's let's say. We choose a, what is the unity gain frequency if omega d is much smaller than omega naught a naught square f omega d is the unity gain frequency right and uh, let us assume that uh, assume that omega d is chosen such that the unity gain frequency is 0.1 omega naught. All right. Okay. So, by the way, uh, so let us first check out the fact that the assumption or assumption that omega naught does not result in any appreciable magnitude response at the unity gain frequency. So, what is the magnitude response of uh, 1 by s, uh, you know, 1 plus s by omega naught at uh, 1 tenth the frequency? So, it is a it is a so it is 1 by square root of 1 plus 0 0.01. So, it is a square root of 1.01 with 1.05, 1 over 1.05 is 0.95, right. So, it basically only changes the uh, the uh, uh, I mean, so point I mean, sorry, 1.05, I mean, uh, right, uh, 1.05. So, 0 0.995 is the magnitude at uh, uh, 1 tenth uh, of omega naught. So, for all practical purposes therefore, the unity gain frequency is quite accurately equal to a naught square f omega naught right. If this uh, ratio is not 0 0.1 we may not be so lucky right. So, let us say uh, omega u was only half of omega naught then what is it now it becomes now 1 by square root of 1.25 which is 1.12 right and uh, 1 by that is 0 0.87 something like that. So, basically you can see this is a 10 percent uh, reduction in the uh, uh, in the magnitude response. So, the unity gain frequency is actually slightly small. Hmm. So, uh, so the, the omega u is uh, uh, you know 0 0.1 omega naught. So, what is the uh, the angle of the loop gain at 
omega u I mean to make omega u equal to 0 0.1 omega naught, what is omega d? 0 0.1 omega naught by a naught square f, okay. So, what is the loop gain at, uh, at uh, omega u? What is the angle of the loop gain at omega u? Minus 90 degrees, that is coming from the dominant pole, right, minus tan inverse 0.1 radians, right, tan inverse 0.1 is roughly, tan inverse a small number is roughly a small number. So, that is basically roughly 0.1 radians, right. So, uh, this is, uh, uh, so this is approximately 0.1 radians is how many degrees? 1 radians 56 degrees, come on fellows, huh? Huh? right. So, 0 0.1 radians 5 and a half degrees, something less than roughly 6, uh, 6 degrees. So, this basically is the, means that the phase is uh, 90 plus uh, is about uh, 96 degrees uh, phase length, correct. So, what is the phase margin? Eighty-four degrees. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, the unity gain bandwidth, as we say, you know, we said this. So, if uh, uh, so, we chose omega d to be 0 0.1 omega naught by a naught square f. Now, let us say we say, okay, well, this phase margin is uh, is uh, is too high. Correct. Uh, and that's why I'm getting uh, killed in my bandwidth. So, let me become brave and choose omega d is. say I do not know 0.2 omega naught by a naught square f, correct. So, what comment can you make about uh, omega u now? 0.2 omega. So, what has happened to my bandwidth, closed loop bandwidth? It has gone up by a factor of 2, all right. So, the angle of the loop gain at omega u therefore, is nothing but minus pi by 2 minus tan inverse 0 0.2 which is roughly minus 102 degrees. What is uh, the phase margin? 78 degrees. So, I mean uh, as you can see you know going from 84 degrees phase margin to 78 degree phase margin has increased your bandwidth by a by a factor of 2. All right. So, now let me turn this whole thing uh, upside down another example, right. So, what dominant pole frequency must I choose? for a phase margin of of say I do not know I mean uh, say uh, 60 degrees, the reasonable right. So, basically I mean in a practical situation you know the DC loop gain that you have right, you know where the locations of the poles are, the design problem is to choose is for me to figure out. Now, what dominant pole frequency I must choose so that I have some desired level of stability, right? So uh, again, uh, with dominant pole compensation, the loop gain becomes uh, one plus s by omega d. As we discussed, we can make one of the poles dominant. Okay. So, first cut, uh, you know, let us assume that the unity gain frequency is omega u is less than omega naught and uh, uh, this may basically means that omega u is how much? 10,000 omega d. What is the angle of the loop gain? I mean, what is the so phase margin is 
60 degrees, which basically means that the angle of the loop gain at omega u must be minus 120 degrees. Is that clear? So, out of these 120 degrees, uh, how much must be coming from the dominant pole? Minus 90 is coming from the dominant pole. So, basically this extra 30 degrees must be coming from so yeah, this uh, 3 tan inverse, oh sorry 2 tan inverse, very good, 2 tan inverse omega u by omega naught must be equal to 30 degrees, okay. So, this is basically tan inverse omega u by omega naught is So, which means that omega u over omega naught is, uh, is tan 15, yeah, which is about uh, I would say something like 0 0.3, okay, 0 0.26, okay. All right. So, what does this mean? Omega u which is uh, 10,000 omega d is 0.26 omega naught and therefore, omega d is nothing but yeah, I do not know uh, uh, 2.6 into 10 power minus 5 omega naught. Okay. Does it make sense? All right. So now uh, let's go back and check if this omega u less than. Uh, I mean, if if this uh, our expression for for omega u is is consistent with our assumption, right? So we if we assume that the second pole does not affect the magnitude response, then our omega u is 10,000 times omega d, but, uh, but our omega u by omega naught is basically 0.26, right. So, what is the, uh, uh, what is the magnitude response of this 1 by 1 plus of this extra factor? What is the magnitude response of that at uh, 0 0.26? omega u by omega naught is 0 0.26. So, basically what is the magnitude response? 1 by 1 plus 0 0.26 uh, the whole square, right. What is 0 0.26 the whole square? 1.06, right. So, that is roughly 1.25 square, 1.25 square is point, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know whatever, right. Uh, so, it is uh, uh, 1.5, uh, 1.5 ish, right. So, basically, so now the question is are we in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, oh sorry, actually what is it? 1 fourth, this is roughly 1 fourth, right, 1 plus 1, plus one fourth square. So, that is basically 1.06, right, 1.06, 0.95, 1 by 1.06 is 0.95 roughly. So, 0.95, so like we are about 5 percent off, right. So, uh, you know what does this mean? Well, like the higher order term is you know I mean if we are squeamish about it then we should basically account for this, uh, uh, this thing, right. So, this uh, what this means is that this omega u uh, our estimate is slightly, slightly higher than uh, you know the magnitude response at this frequency is actually smaller than 1 because of the extra attenuation because of the extra of the those two extra poles. So, you just move this by we are in error by 5 percent. So, this has to be moved a little by you know by 5 percent right and then uh, you know you will basically uh, okay. I mean if uh, 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 else the other thing to do is basically you know do the uh, the uh, 
the uh, usual calculation I mean you know find the frequency at which this uh, this whole uh, this thing becomes becomes one. Hmm? Okay, so the bottom line is uh, as you can see uh, I mean this is how uh, you would uh, uh, you would design in practice. Hmm? So, you have some DC gain that you need to accommodate right you have want some degree of stability you know the number of poles you know where the poles are in this example of course you know uh, to make life easy for me on the, in the in the on the blackboard i just chose identical three identical poles but i mean nothing prevents one pole from being at omega naught the other one being at i don't know 1.5 omega naught the other one being at 0.9 omega naught something like that in any case you know this is the uh, right and the closed loop bandwidth is going to be you know the unity gain frequency which is uh, which is 0.26 times omega naught. All right. Now, if I all of a sudden, if I wanted a phase margin not of 60 degrees, but uh, you know, I wanted a phase margin of uh, uh, of I would know, uh, let's say uh, 80 degrees. Right. What would what would what would change in the calculation? Angle of the loop gain must be 100 degrees, out of which 90 degrees is coming from the dominant pole. So uh, 10 degrees must be coming from 2 poles. So, tan inverse omega u by omega naught must be 5 degrees, right. 5 degrees is roughly, I mean tan inverse, uh, I mean tan, uh, 5 degrees is roughly 0.1, right, okay. So, 5 degrees is what, I mean uh, is 1 by 11th actually, roughly, uh, you know, point, uh, you know, 0.09, something like that, right. And uh, so, omega u by omega naught is basically 0.1 rather than 0.25. So, uh, so what comment can we make about uh, the uh, the closed loop bandwidth therefore, it is reduced by a factor of 2.5, right. So, you can see therefore, that there is a there is quite a you know quite some penalty to be paid to have a large phase mass. Does it make sense? Okay. So, uh, with uh, this, uh, you know, uh, we are, uh, this is all that I had to say about, about, uh, you know, stabilizing a system using dominant pole compensation. And why is this dominant pole compensation so, uh, so popular? Well, I mean, it is easy to do, right. There is nothing, you know, if the system is oscillating, what do you do? You take a big capacitor, put it somewhere, right. And uh, if the oscillation does not go away, it means that, I mean, that is not enough. You keep putting more and more and more until, right, uh, the phase margin, I mean, why, until the system stops oscillating. Anyway, so this is, this is all the theory of, uh, you know, dominant pole compensation that uh, is, is needed at this level, I mean at, uh, for an elementary course like this, right. Uh, so, now you know we are now armed with uh, this knowledge, we will uh, we'll jump on to our two stage op amp and then uh, stabilize it. Hmm?